I hear it. My God, don't go down there. Call the police. Jesus, Mary and Joseph, protect us. want to see. Sorry, Louie. End of the month. I'm running on fumes. No, it's not money. You see CNN tonight? Record setting cold front coming in. It's going to be colder than a witch's what? Can I sleep in a church? Hey. Here you go, Lisbon. Louie, we're not zoned for it, all right? We're in trouble with the city on permits already. Spoken like a true bureaucrat, Father. Listen, I have something to offer you in exchange for sleeping in the church. Something you can't resist. What? Your immortal soul. Come your blessing into the kingdom. For what you do for the least of these, my brethren. You do for me. You know who that's about? That's about me. Now, you want to get into the kingdom or not? Ray, your father shot your brother. What? I'll tell you about it in the car. Come on. Ray, well, what about the parish? Hold down the fort. But Martin's gone. Who's in charge? You are, Eric. I am? Father. Hey, Louie. You see CNN tonight? What? got them both here now. Your father's on a weapons charge and your brother for breaking and entering. Not in the same cell, I hope. <laughs> you put your father in the cell. The chief's a respected man around here. It's yeah. a hero. Yeah, it's a hero, all right. How's my brother? Your father just winged him, but um, the cat wasn't so lucky. Dead? Dead. So it's not all bad news. Look, um, you're a priest. I mean, that's supposed to be like Jesus, right? Can't you do something for your family? What people forget about Jesus is that he ran away from home when he was 13. He did. Hey, Frankie. Don't call me that. That's the name I gave you. Francis Xavier. Great missionary. Of course, I wouldn't have named you that. I knew you were going to take it so literally. You know, I knew your life of crime would catch up with you sooner or later. Had to happen. How you doing? Fine, fine. How you doing? Fine. Things are fine. How you doing, Frankie? Rotten. They brought in another priest to keep an eye on me, so this is about the last thing I need right yeah, now. Perfect time for your brother to show up, huh? What I don't get is what the hell I'm doing in jail when he was the one breaking in. Well, I told you not to keep a gun in the house. It makes Mom nervous. I got the gun because your mother was nervous about the neighborhood. Dad, you could have killed him. I was going to kill him. I would have done it years ago. Where the hell is she with the bail? Look, I'm, I'm trying to get the police to forget about the whole thing. It was an accident. It was an accident, wasn't it? I'm going to press charges. Dad, Mike's a two-time loser. This could put him away for a long time. You don't want to do that, do you? And if you're going to bail him out, leave me in. Because the next time I see him, if I've got a gun, what happens might not be an accident. I'll think about it. Hey, Frankie, get me out of here, huh? I feel like a jerk. I don't know. I don't like having you locked up. He shot me, Ray. Can you believe that? 
The bastard shot me. Well, Mike, you were breaking and entering. You can't break into your own house. Then what were you doing? No, oh, come on. Right. Uh, knocking off a liquor store, that's one thing. But your own house? What? You've never forgot your keys. You've never come in through a window. So you ring the bell. <laughs> I didn't want to wake him up. I, I, here I am. I'm, I'm trying to be uh, considerate. And he shoots me. And Han knew who it was when he shot me, too. No, he didn't. How do you know that? Because he's a good shot and you're still alive. Uh, and don't call him Han. You know he hates that. You know what? He should have thought of that before he gave me so much of the back of it. Mike, Mike, what did you come back here for? You know, maybe I had some good news and I wanted to surprise him. What? What good news? I'm getting married. I'm getting married and I wanted to tell them. You're getting married? Man, that's... What? You're not getting married. You just came back for that ring. Officer, I got a right to that ring. Mom promised it to whichever one of us got married first. You're out of the running. I don't care about the ring, Mike. Whatever she wanted to do with it, I can guarantee she didn't want to pawn it off to support your drug habit. You can't let him press charges, Ray. Talk to him. Talk to him yourself. Hey, come on, man. We made a deal, remember? We were going to start over. I'm trying to get married. I'm trying to do my part. Are you, Mike? Ray. Ray! Thanks. I called Eric, told him we're staying overnight. What's up here? Well, my father may or may not have shot my brother. On purpose. My brother may or may not be getting married. And my brother may or may not have broken into my parents' house to steal some jewelry. Well, now that we got that cleared up. You know I tell the truth all the time, Leo. It's just easier. Well, what's to be done here? Well, that's what I'd like to know. Ma, how you doing? Ray. Ah, just goes on and on, doesn't it? Oh, hello, Father Leo. How nice to see you again. Hello, Helen. Well, I managed to put enough together to bail one of them out. Which one will we take? Tough call. I think we let Father Ray decide. <laughs> Please don't call me that. Salvation. Eternal salvation. That's what I'm offering you. No, Louie. No, okay? I'm not going to do it. Well, Ray and Martin are away. My primary concern is to make sure that not one single disaster occurs. Since when is letting people sleep in the church a disaster? People? I, I thought it was just you we were talking about. Uh, me too, but the more I read this stuff, the more it gets to me. Well, be careful, Louie. You read too much of that stuff, you might end up with a vocation. Now, if you'll excuse me. But... Oh. Then he will say to those on his left, out of my sight, you condemned, into that everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I had no home and you gave me no welcome. Judge, you know my father. Fire Chief, Big Brother, Knights of Columbus, Pop Warner Coach, you name it, he's done it. He shot my brother. Now, my brother, he's been in out of trouble since he was old enough to walk. Three different high schools, petty theft, drug abuse, two stretches in the pen. So there you have it. A hero and a bomb. Or so it seems. Because what a lot of people don't know is my father is also a recovering alcoholic. And back in his old drinking days, he used to sound an awful lot like Mike. He had the same DUIs, the same fights, the whole nine yards. But Mike! Mike has got more heart, more courage, more untapped potential than all of us put together. So it's a paradox. Look, my father wants to send Mike back to jail. But if Mike goes down on a third strike, all of his potential goes with him, too. So I'm just asking you, please, 
Don't let that happen. Paradoxes abound, Father. Meanwhile, laws are broken, lives are in danger. Your father says Mike will be better off in jail where less will be expected of him. Right. But in this case, I disagree. At least right now. Jail is not the answer. Oh, thank God. Father Ray, you work with a church that does extraordinary works of charity. Well, charity begins at home. I'm going to remand your brother to community service at your parish under your supervision. <laughs> what, you know, look, I, I can't do that. I, see, I've never been able to help him. Well, you're going to have to. We seem to be addressing the oldest question in the Bible. Am I my brother's keeper? In this case, I can answer most definitively. Yes, you are. All rise. Well, it's nice to have the family together. Let's turn up the men on the right, the ladies on the left. Miss T, Miss T, you all can fucking side the temple, okay? All right, thanks. Oh, that's good. Ah, home sweet home. What'd you do? Turn the church into a Y? Louie, what's going on here? It's a shelter for the night. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing, Ray. Who told you to do this? Father Eric. He's a holy man. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, where exactly is St. Eric? He's in the kitchen. Uh, look, I can't talk to you right now. I've got to set up those bunks over there. You mind helping? What do you need? Uh, we just need to, to line them up. Right there. Hey, Father Leo. How you doing? See ya. Uh, where do you think you're going, Justine? School's closed because they called. I'm going home. Not a chance. Ray. Ray. Ray, wait up. J.A., hurry up. You're falling behind on the peanut butter. Sorry, but the super chunky takes a lot longer to spread than the creamy. Eric! Oh. Ray's gonna be fine with this. Eric! You sure about that? Yeah. Eric, what the hell's going on upstairs? Look, I, I, I don't know what happened, Ray. I was just talking to Louie, and, and the next thing I knew, my immortal soul was on the line. Yeah? So what's going on? Well, we we turned the church in, into a shelter for the night. You know, it's gonna be really cold, and... And who gave you permission to do this? Nobody. Nobody. I just did it. Oh! Well, you weren't here, and everybody... You just did it? Uh, no zoning consideration, no planning, no phone calls to me? No, Ray, I just, I just did it. I am so proud of you. <laughs> I told you. Oh, man, it's good to be home. Hey, how's your family doing? Great. My father shot my brother. Is he okay? Oh, he's fine. Uh, actually, he's going to be working with us for a little while. Oh, good. Ray. Yeah. Ray, look, the school is closed. I'm the director of religious education. I'm going home. Um, I'm the receptionist. Sydney's the business manager. And J.A.'s the youth minister. Hello. Titles are just names we put on what we really do. Which is pretty much whatever is necessary. Well, then where, where is the director of the shelter? Oh, that would be Mo, and you pushed her out, remember? I didn't push her out. That was not my choice. Okay, okay. Just do, do one thing for me, and then I'll let you go. What's that? There's a homeless lady outside on the steps, Lisbon. If you can get her to come inside, then you can go. Done. <laughs> Has Lisbon ever accepted help from anybody? <laughs> not that I know of. That's a boiler. Has anybody been kicking the thing lately? Eric, we got a problem. This doesn't look good. I told you, I told you we need to get it replaced. You know, it, it's things like this that make me believe there is no God. I can fix this. And it's things like this that make me want to believe. You can fix it? I knew there was a reason you were here. I worked on boilers in the joint. Where do you keep your tools? No, thanks. We'll call a professional. I can fix this no problem. It's ancient, but so are the ones I worked on before. Well, thanks, but we'll call a professional. Suit yourself. Did we just look a gift horse in the mouth? 
Trust me, hot wiring cars is about as mechanical as Mike gets. Seems you could have gone a little easier on him. Look, stay out of it, Lee, okay? You don't understand. Well, I understand that this is not about a boiler. Ray, sooner or later, you're going to have to learn to deal with your family. Look, I know my own family, and I don't need you preaching to me about it, okay? I've been preaching a long time, Ray. Years. Not since you replaced me as pastor. And you're the one that preaches around here, Ray. Not me. I think you should make nice to Mike. She's not coming in, is she? Who? Lisbon. Louie told me that she never comes in. So when were you going to let me in on your little joke? Look, Justine... You know, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. I mean, I know that you need to surround yourself with poor people to remind yourself of your good intentions, but she's a real person. She's not a joke. Yeah, well, thanks for the reminder. Look... That real person is going to have a long, lonely, cold night unless someone can get her to come inside. Now, if you think you can, then do it. And quit lecturing me. I will. Good. Uh, wait, let me move okay. here. Hi. I'm sorry. No, you're not, Ray. Okay, all right. Well, maybe I'm not, but uh, we need you to fix that boiler anyway. Well, I can't do that. All I can do is hotwire cars, that's all. Like, what do you want me to say, Mike? You know the funny thing about you, Ray? You trust anybody in this room, any homeless person off the street. You open your door to him, take him in, you won't trust your own brother. Well, you think I want not to trust you? You think I want to have to wonder whether you're gonna steal something in here or score some drugs? It's because you've given me cause to. Fine, I won't do it anymore. Bye. Look, Mike. Get your hand off me. Look, don't fix it for me, all right? Just fix it for the sake of all these people in here. No, man, fix it yourself. Pray it better. Mike. Go to hell. Boys, don't fight. Huh? <laughs> Mike. Mom. What, what are you doing here? Well, I left your father. For good? Well, I didn't know where else to go, so I did what I've done all my life. I came to church. Yeah, my church. Oh, good. Why did you not want me to come? Well, no, it's, it's just complicated. Why'd you leave? Did he hit you? Oh, you know your father never hit me. Besides, there are worse things. Like what? Like knowing your husband wants to take your son away. Nothing could be worse than that. So that's why you left? I went to a fortune teller. Have you ever gone? Mm, different union. Give me your hands. She traced lines, all sorts of lines, all lifelines. Romance lines. She was so good, I kept giving her money. She knew about you? No, she was all wrong about me. Then what was she so good at? Listening? It's been a long time since anybody has listened to me. Or touched me so gently. Oh, she told me I was going to take a long journey. One. So what are you going to do? You can't stay here. Why not, darling? Everybody else is. No, I mean long term. <laughs> Who knows how much of a long term is going to be? Have you seen the doctor? Is that what this is all about? I am not going back to the doctor, boys. Now, Ray, I am sorry to bother you, but... I all I need is a place to stay tonight, and then tomorrow, well, I'll figure out what it is I'm going to do. I can't do this anymore. I just can't. I've got to get out of this family. <laughs> Man, she played you. I, I, I don't mean to be a bother, but I'm dying. <laughs> uh, what am I supposed to say? Leave? Yeah, you could. You know who's the most twisted of any of us? You. You're the only one who never tells the truth. 
even to yourself. You better come upstairs fast. Cops. Must be. Excuse me. Excuse me. What's going on here? Sorry to bother you, Father, but we have a complaint regarding a possible parole violation. What are you talking about? He stole a ring from our house! Dad, son of a... You killed him! What do you mean? You stole his mother's ring! Come on, let's go! Let's go! He stole his own mother's ring! I knew it! I told you. We're gonna have to deal with them sooner or later. Told him, told him I stole the ring. Okay, now everybody listen. I didn't say anything, Mike. Man, I knew it. I knew you'd find some way to make me the fall guy. See what they tell you? Arrest him. Are you happy now, man? There's no saint without a sinner, right? Hey, where do you think you're going? Get your hands off me, old man! Now, how they dare you steal from your mother after all she's done for you? You gotta cool down here. Yeah, cool it, hand. I'm not in high school anymore. You don't just get to knock me around for your entertainment. Oh God, the whining! Why don't you just deal with it like a man for a change? Admit it. You stole the ring. Right there. Calm down. Come on. Oh, thanks for your help, father. Careful you don't get your halo dirty. You know the old man's right. You take away your poor little me act, and you got nothing left. Yeah, I got this left. <laughs> Helen, what are you doing here? Stop it, no! Get on your... Ma. Over here, Father. Come on. Take it easy, huh? Give your mother the ring. Mike didn't take that ring. Well, for God's sake, Helen, stop babying him! That ring hasn't been there for years. I sold that ring years ago. When your dad was bottoming out. Bail, DUIs, higher car insurance. Where do you think that money came from? That's bull. <laughs> Am I the only one who sees the humor in it? Mike, knock it off. For God's sake, Helen, you sold it? You do what you have to do, Vince. Isn't that what you always said? Well, you'll excuse us. You guys don't need a cop. You need a social worker. Let's go, Jack. Thanks for the love and support, Han. That's uh, twice in a week you sick the cops on me. It's a new record. Come on, Alan. I don't want to drive these roads in the dark. You go ahead. What do you mean? I'm not coming back. What do you mean you're not coming back? Dad, she needs a break. Helen, get in the damn car. I'm staying here. I busted my butt 35 years for this. No way. The hell with you. The hell with all of you. You know, it doesn't make any sense for us both to freeze out here, so if you're not going to take any charity, why don't we just make a trade, right? My gloves for yours. What do you say? Put them on. There's no trade unless you put them on. What about the hat? Ladies. Go away, I'm fine. Well, I'm not. Open the door. Oh, sorry, Father Leo. I thought it was Ray. Damn battery's dead. Uh, yeah. Oh, thanks. Oh. Ah. Mother of God! It's cold out there. Why don't you come inside? No, I don't want to see Helen or the boys. We sure could use your skills in there. You'll forgive me, Father, but my skills add up to zero. 35 years, I freaking risked my life, and for what? Is it supposed to be for you? I don't know those kids. Either one of them. That's the truth. I'm related to strangers. They're your sons. You raised them. Their mother raised them. Maybe she knows them. Me, I... I might as well be talking to people on the subway. 
You know, to be honest with you, Father, the only thing I want to do right now is walk away. What does that make me? Human. I'm a fireman. I rescue people. My own sons. Look, Harley, we got more than we can handle in there. We need you. You're not going anywhere tonight. Come on inside and help us. Just like old times. Want some sweats? Yeah, thanks. I've always wondered, what do you pray for? My family. You sure you're doing it right? You still pray at nights, don't you, Ray? Not with the two of you here. What do you pray for? I don't pray for things much. I just kind of keep God company the night. Wouldn't it be easier just to have sex? Yeah, probably. Nice mouth. You wouldn't talk that way if you were married. I am getting married. Oh, yeah? Then where's your wife? Where's yours? Good night, everybody. All right, I'm sorry. I tried to give you everything. It didn't work. I'm sorry. Forgive me. <laughs> what? Why do you find that so hard to believe? It's all been for you boys, all of it. Oh, you even bringing a cop here to arrest me? Yeah, even that. I mean, don't you understand what... Am I the only one who knows what's going on here? Dead. No, please. come on, Ray. Your brother's a terrific thief, even as a kid. I mean, my, my shoes, my belt, my cufflinks, and I could never catch him. You can't tell me that he can't break into his own house without waking up half the neighborhood. He wants to be caught. He's begging for it. I'm just trying to help out. Trying to help me out? Yeah. Dad, your wife is asleep in the church office because even she sees, after all these years, you don't think about anybody but yourself. Well, I've got into burning buildings for other people's kids. Who asked you? Nobody. You spent a lifetime of double shifts going into burning buildings because you didn't want to come home. No, no, that's not right at all. Well, you listen to me. All right, let me talk. You know, there was once when your mother was carrying you. I went into this burning house. They thought there was somebody in there. And I searched and I searched until I realized there was nobody there. I also realized that I'd gone too far and that I was going to die for nothing. And I decided, I just decided that I was going to live. And I fought like hell to get out of that place and back home to your mother and to you. You're the reason I got home, Mike. And from that moment on, I knew who I was inside. I knew that I was somebody who was going to live. Now, don't turn away from me. You've never had a moment like that where you've had to face the consequences and carry out because your mother always protected you. But, Mike, I'm scared for you now. I'm scared you've gone too far. I'm scared that if somebody doesn't stop you soon, you're going to be so far into that house that nobody's going to save you. I don't have to listen to this. Since he was a kid, he's always run away. What are you gonna do? You know, if a father came to me and told me his son was stealing his shoes, I wouldn't tell him his kid was a thief. I would tell him his son didn't want his father to leave. You never had to run into a burning building for Mike. All you ever had to do was go to him. You could do it now. Here? No, no. What time is it? 
Well, it's after six. He's supposed to jumpstart the soup kitchen. You know, he's cooking today, but there's no sign of him. He was looking for a place to bunk down. Did you check the church? Yeah, I looked all over. He's What's over. wrong? Ray! Ray! Yeah. You gotta get down there. There's something wrong with Mike. Okay. All right, Mike. Let's have a look here. You're going to be fine. It's all right. Straighten out his legs, will you? He's not breathing. Yeah, it's, just do what I tell you, right? Straighten out his legs. Mike! All right, Mike. Mike! Okay. Oh, my God. What happened? Oh, my God. All right, Mike. Okay, that's it. Come on. Stay with me, Mike. Everything's going to be fine. Come on. Stay with me. Save him. All right, Mike. Come on. Everything's going to be fine. Come on. Stay with me. How's your brother? Indestructible, like I told you. Mom's calling it an accident, of course, and Dad got to be the big hero. It's a perfectly happy family, just the way it is. I just don't want to be part of it anymore. doesn't well then did you let them see you like this why not did you ever hear darwin only the strong survive in my family the darwin's an idiot evolution doesn't work man proves it <laughs> your family proves it it's the weak that hold the key get off the soapbox leo What do I have to do to get you to hear me? Are they all gone? Pretty much. It's a, it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. And I am going to sleep right through it. Hey, how's Mike? Is he dead? Um, no, no. They pumped his stomach. He's, uh, he's going to be fine. He's a strong guy. It was sort of a wake-up call, I guess. No, I mean him. Is he dead? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Billy. Morning. Hi. That's okay, Eric. I've got the mass. There's usually a homily at this mass, Leo. That's okay. I'll preach. You, you haven't preached for quite some time, Leo. I'll think of something. I'll get Ray. As you wish. I stopped preaching when I lost my faith in the resurrection. <laughs> It was the wounds that did it, I suppose. You see, when God brought his son back to, from the dead, he left five gaping wounds in his body. Now, that seemed cruel to me. If he's going to bring him back to life, why didn't he heal the wounds? If he were my son, I would have. St. Thomas, after whom our church is named, he had his doubts about the resurrection too, but Jesus came to him. He said, come here, Thomas, give me your hand. I want you to put your hand into my wounds and feel that I'm alive. That's what the wounds are for. Places for each one of us to enter into somebody else's life. They are honorable things, even though most of us spend most of our time trying to hide them. You know, it's like those other people that you always see in paintings of the resurrection. It's the soldiers. That they're strong, oh, they're whole, and they are protected by their armor. But you know something else? Look at them. They're asleep. <laughs> they sleep through the resurrection. And I don't want any friend. I don't want any son 
of mine to sleep through the resurrection. Frankie? Oh, getting ready to release Mike. He's gonna be fine. Just fine. Is he? Ready? Yeah. Do you going back home, Mom? Your father needs me. Look, uh, before you go, uh, there's something I'd like to, to tell you. Mike had it right. I've never really been straight with you. Yeah, right, can this wait till later? No, no, it can't. We're all going our separate ways and we're going back to the same old patterns that brought us here. I can't. I can't go back to just being angry at you all the time. You made me a priest. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> no, it's, it's not a compliment, believe me. Not at all. You taught me to pray. And I don't mean... Hail Marys and Our Fathers, I mean, to really pray, to yearn, to beg God for something that I want more than my own life. And for such a simple thing, simplest thing, really, that you'd love each other, that you'd love Mike, me, That we all could just love each other. We do. You know we do. <laughs> no. I mean, without the, the, the screaming and the, the drinking and the drugs and the religion, without, without any of it. Just us. I could never really make it happen. I could never do anything about it. I just, I can't. Wanting so much for us has made me very good with other people's families. I just can't seem to do anything with us. And I'm sorry. close the church and just for this morning staff needs to get some sleep I'll uh, just be a few minutes Leo then I'll be on my way God I'm so tired where have you been I spent the entire night with Lisbon what we went everywhere we kept each other warm she drove a hard bargain but we traded clothes all night long and somewhere in the city there is a woman begging wearing seven hundred dollars worth of designer clothes well welcome to the family i don't know leo i i think that i should just 
Call Sister Maureen and ask her if she wants her old job back because I just don't think that I'm cut out for this. Uh, Elizabeth's shouting can wear you down. But it's not just shouting. It's this one prayer over and over and over and it's now it's like this song that I can't get out of my head. The Anima Christi, soul of Christ, be my salvation. Oh, no, don't start, don't start. It was one hell of a homily. Well, it ought to be. I've been working on it for five years. What happened? I told the truth, Leo. And that's all you can do. How do you feel? Tired. Very, very tired. Aren't you? Nah, no. Old people don't need much sleep. Well, I do. Good night, Leo. <laughs>